I recently saw a video titled How the Naruto Fandom Ruined a Genius Director's Career. It was about how anime fans are illiterate when it comes to animation, and inspired me to talk about how anime fans are illiterate when it comes to writing. There are many people who hop between literate and illiterate takes, while there are others who are mostly illiterate. This video is not directed at anyone specific, just the anime community as a whole. I've been feeling this way for a while. You know I write with a scalpel because my penmanship is surgical. When it comes to art, I believe it is a complex mix of subjectivity and objectivity. I think the objectivity is in the universal technical qualities of art, while the subjectivity is in which of those qualities each person enjoys. For example, if I want to talk about music, I can give my opinion, but if I want to make an actual intelligent argument on why a song was good or bad, I need to have knowledge of music theory in order to deliver my point efficiently. My knowledge of the inner workings and science of music is the difference between me saying this song is bad because it doesn't sound good and me saying this song is bad because the chord progression was static and repetitive. Yume 1 doesn't know anything about music, so he can't explain why he doesn't like the song, but Yume 2 at least knows a little bit about music, so he can put his feelings into words that have objective meaning. This doesn't mean Yume 2 is right, it just means he did a better job at explaining his opinion. In this example, chord progression is an objective technical quality of music, but the importance I place on it is subjective. Let's use paintings as an example. There are objective terms and concepts in paintings, like color, value, contrast, shading, etc. In this example, I'm comparing Leonardo's Mona Lisa to Raphael's small Cobra Madonna. You may one, the artistically illiterate me, can only say Leonardo's painting looks more realistic, but Raphael's painting looks more lively. While you may two, could say Leonardo's painting is more anatomically realistic and has realistic fabric, but the colors muted with low contrast. Meanwhile, Raphael's painting has a more stylized anatomy and simpler fabric design, but it also uses high contrast colors, which looks better. You may one just feel something, you may two can explain what he's feeling through objective elements. This brings me to writing. Just like with music and painting, there are objective elements in writing. Most people are aware of this. Problem number one is that so many people will dislike a character and then chalk it up to bad writing. Just because you don't like a character doesn't mean they're poorly written. This stupid logic leads to them making up measurements and statistics to prove the character they dislike is poorly written. This leads into another problem which is that most of these troglodytes don't even have internal consistency, especially when it comes to characters, which should be the easiest thing to analyze in a story. Another problem is that most of these people have never picked up a book on screenwriting. I'm not saying that these books on screenwriting are the law, because even they disagree with each other, but it at least serves as a base and allows you to challenge your own opinions on how stories should be written. If I live in an echo chamber where I'm always right about writing, I'd be giving out media illiterate takes like so many I've heard before. But if you look at someone who's actually studied writing and see what they have to say and then challenge your own thoughts with theirs, you can actually improve your own writing analysis. Step 1 of getting rid of your illiteracy is acknowledging that feelings exist. Just because you like a character doesn't mean they're good and vice versa. There could just be personal triggers within you that have nothing to do with whether a character is well written or not. Let me use myself as an example. For the most part, I seriously despise Denji from Chainsaw Man. This is because I think he's a complete loser and a representation of clinically online losers like your stereotypical Reddit or Discord moderator. His hedonistic obsession with vulgarity and lack of a respectable goal or purpose irritate me to no end. But I'm not going to sit here and stand here and say that he's a bad character just because of that. Not a hedonistic scum isn't on my grading rubric for good characters. There are things about him that do actually damage him as a character. For example, I've said that his lack of morals make him a weak protagonist because they often prevent him from having philosophical battles with his opponents, which then reduces the amount of themes the story can execute. See the difference? One is, I don't like this in a person, and the other is, his narrative function is damaged for specific reasons which lead to specific undesirable results. Nami from One Piece is another good example. I think she's a despicable friend that constantly takes advantage of those around her. I think the One Piece community should hate her more than Sakura, but I'm not going to say she's a bad character just because she's a bad person. A lot of people I see use their pet peeves as a justification for why a character is poorly written rather than just saying, I don't like this. I've heard people say, this character is a pervert and I don't like perverts, therefore they're a bad character. Or, this female character is sexualized and I don't like fan service, so this character is now a worse written character. Meliodas isn't a bad character because he's a pervert. Shinji isn't a bad character because he's a whiny little brat. Asta isn't a bad character because he's annoying. Endeavor isn't a bad character because he ran the ones on his son. Gabby isn't a bad character because she's an indoctrinated brat. You can dislike these characters without jumping to calling them poorly written. The illiteracy is crazy. I talked about a grading rubric, which brings me to my next point.
Step two to eliminating illiteracy is getting internal consistency. Internal consistency is the biggest factor in why so many people have horrible takes on characters or writing in general. Imagine you're a teacher and you have to grade tests. You need a rubric for this, a checklist for things that each test should have. You put fictional characters through this test and they get a score based on how many of the boxes they ticked. First, I'm pretty sure most of these normies don't even have a rubric. For those that actually do, put every single character that you like through that test. I can almost guarantee you that a lot of characters you still like will fail it. That's because your rubric is garbage and you need to fix it. I used to be in that boat too, even when I thought I was media literate. I used to be one of those clowns who said, a good character needs to have a character arc, otherwise they're poorly written. I used to be one of those idiots that criticized Luffy as a character for not having any character arcs. Then I remembered that I liked L from Death Note. L has no character arc. This had me looking at myself like, dang, you look stupid now. So I changed my grading rubric to make character arcs optional because I realized that there were characters that I thought were well written but didn't have character arcs. Countless people need to do this rubric test because it'll stop you from being a hypocrite. Countless times I've heard someone criticize character X for doing A but then praise character Y who also does A. Stop doing that. And since I started my Shonen Female Defense Force, I've seen so many people have separate tests for male and female characters. They'll say a female character has to do this, that, and the other to be a good character but completely ignore all the male characters that fail that test. And then they'll have the audacity to call the story sexist. If you complete step 2, it'll stop you from saying Demon Slayer is bad because it's repetitive when you know damn well you dick ride Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which is just about as repetitive. It'll stop you from saying Ichigo is a bad protagonist because he has no goal when you love Yusuke who doesn't have a goal either. It'll stop you from saying Black Clover is bad because it's a ripoff when every story in existence takes a lot of inspiration from other stories. Some of y'all will read books on the 10 waves of feminism or the red pill manosphere matrix, but you won't pick up a damn book on writing stories before publicly talking about writing like you know something. Personally, I own three books, Story by Robert McKee, Anatomy of Story by John Truby, and Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. Like I said before, reading screenwriting books isn't just to copy and regurgitate what someone else said. They aren't objectively right about everything, it's to develop your own knowledge of writing. These people have presumably spent a lot of time thinking about and editing writing, so why wouldn't you learn from them? You find things that you agree with, discover new thoughts, and challenge thoughts you disagree with. You become a better student of writing by looking at what's already been said by professionals. Why reinvent the wheel when you can take a modern wheel and improve it? None of the writers of the books I own ever wrote a popular movie, but that doesn't suddenly discredit them. Someone can study writing and become really good at breaking it down without having written a masterpiece themselves. If you complete these three steps, then you can actually become a student of writing. Someone who actually studies and researches writing and has solid arguments that can't easily be exposed. Someone who is worth listening to when discussing writing. In conclusion, animation isn't the only subject anime fans are illiterate on. Writing is another. You can eliminate your ignorance by realizing that feelings aren't facts, developing internal consistency, and reading what other established students of writing have said. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.